Welcome to the second grade curriculum preview for elementary science. Um, we're going to talk about the third six weeks, unit three, for cycles and systems. As always, we want to start off with the key planning documents. We're going to refer to the pacing guide, the unit overview, and then talk about the vocabulary that's on the clarifiers. So just a reminder where those are and what their function is. One of the biggest challenges for the third six weeks is trying to plan around the two major breaks that we have during this uh, six weeks. So I have a screenshot on the uh, slide that shows November, December, and January, and that's the span of the third six weeks. It starts on November 14th, and then it ends on January 13th. We've got basically, if you look at the bottom of the screen, five uh, days and then a Thanksgiving break. One of those days is scheduled for a CBA for science. Then we have 13 full days and then a Christmas break, and then we have eight days when we come back. So that might be helpful for you just to remember um, those kind of three different chunks of time. And then, of course, we know when you have breaks leading up to a break and coming back, um, getting that full instruction day can be challenging. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, take a look at that kind of chunking compared to the pacing guide. Um, here's that chunk time for the six weeks over here to the right. And then here's the pacing guide for this particular six weeks. And I've got three different sections in this particular unit. And as always, you as the teacher, you can use professional judgment on changing the order of these or even bundling them differently. This is just a suggestion. Um, and so if we take a look at our chunk of time, that's five days, 13 days, and eight days, um, you can say that that doesn't exactly match up in this order. But you have a couple of different choices there to change things around. For instance, down here at the bottom, I have a note. Um, 2.8D focuses on looking at patterns of objects in the sky, specifically the moon and then the sun. So if you would like to do a full month of moon observations with your students, that standard might be best as an introduction for this particular unit so that you have enough time when your kiddos are in school to actually help support them doing those moon observations. So that's just an example of something to kind of keep in mind. There's a lot of different variables that um, go into deciding how the planning goes. And so I hope that this um, view as well as the calendar view will help you and your teammates um, make best decisions for your instruction. I just want to remind you too that a great document that helps when you're planning out a unit, especially when you have a challenging schedule like the six weeks, is the Planning for Learning Protocol, um, the unit document. I find this to be very helpful when I'm trying to lay out the whole six weeks at a time. Um, and this document is on the staff page under resources, but I also attached it um, in Canvas, and you can find that link directly underneath this video if you think this document might be of help for you. Okay, so let's take a look at Unit 3 a little bit more specifically about what's going to be new to your second graders. Um, over on the right side, you'll see that we've got the process skills that I was just want you to keep in mind. Overall, your kiddos are going to be looking at patterns this six weeks, um, and they're going to be graphing and using data, which is new for them, and we've got some new tools as well. So let's take a look at what we've got that's new. So your students are going to be using a thermometer to measure temperature. Um, this is a new um, change for them. In the past, in kindergarten and first grade, they've only used a demonstration th thermometer, which would be a large thermometer. This is going to be a personal thermometer, so I want to show them how to use it properly, not holding it by the bowl, but holding it in the middle, letting them know it's glass, and being very careful with that. So those are some skills that you'll want to build in some time for. In addition to the thermometer, they're also going to use wind vanes and grain gauges, um, and they're going to be graphing data to identify patterns in weather. So all of those things are new. Also new is measuring precipitation, again with the rain gauge, measuring temperature, wind conditions, and cloud coverage. These are all very new, much more specific things that they're going to be looking at with weather. Then they're going to be using that weather information and seasonal information to make decisions about playing outside or what clothes to wear or activities that they do. And then finally, recording patterns of objects in the sky is another new skill for them. So another component to keep in mind as you start to plan your instructional units. Um, as you start to plan, I want to give you another um, resource that might be helpful as far as saving some time when you start to get your um, pencil to paper and start making your plans. 
uh, once you've got the pacing of how you want to um, organize your six weeks, you're going to want to look specifically at what resources you have for each standard. So I just want to show you a couple of new things in the unit overview that I've added that I think will save some time. I'm going to go ahead and bring over the PDF view of the unit overview. And I'm going to scroll on back, excuse me while I scroll, and just kind of point out a couple of things. And again, this is in Forethought um, that you can print off or you can just have for you to use. So let me give you a page view here. It always starts off with just a snapshot of what the six weeks um, standards are, um, content connections, and guiding questions for your students. These are approaches to classroom use. So for instance, you might be wondering, well, if our students are going to be using a thermometer for the first time, Brenda, are we supposed to measure in Fahrenheit or are we supposed to use in Celsius? That is addressed right here. So some of the key questions that have come up over the last couple of years, I've got some of that information there to help you out. What I really wanted to point out, though, is a couple of things in the resources. So the last two pages um, of the um, unit overview include specific resources for a particular standard. I just want to let you know that um, I've spent a lot of time on this to really help save you some time, so I just want to point out a couple of things. So when you're ready to start planning for 2.8a, where they're going to be looking at weather information, I've gone through STEM scopes and I've looked for the strongest points that I think really link well for this particular standard, as well as listed some of the better AIMS lessons that are type fits. I've got some descriptions here about the pieces in EduSmart that fit well, and then I've added some more visuals so you know um, what to look for as far as any Delta readers or those Lakeshore kits that might fit. So if you haven't really been looking at those notes there, they are designed to help save you some time, and I think you'll find them useful. Um, another thing that I've added, I just want to point out to you, let's scroll on down to the bottom. Um, for 2.8D, this is where students are going to be looking at the appearance of the moon, and then also we want to really include looking at the sun's apparent change over time um, of the day and over seasons. This is really going to help um, support vertically some really tough standards in fourth and fifth grade. Um, this past summer, we had some uh, curriculum writers take one of the AIMS lessons called Suns Up, and you can see it right there listed under AIMS. And they kind of took it and they amped it up and increased the rigor and put a lot more, um, I think, interactive pieces in there and so I've actually created a direct link to that particular student task so just wanted you to know that that's, that's there as well. So a couple of time savers um, for the unit overview that I just wanted to point out. Okay and as we wrap up I just want to remind you that um, when you are looking for vocabulary to always check the clarifier and you'll find the vocabulary for that particular standard right there. And if you're ready to try an interactive word wall or if you've already started one, I just want to let you know that when you go back into Canvas, um, there's a just-in-time learning just to the right of where you found this video. And you'll find a 15-minute overview of Dr. Julie Jackson's presentation that she did on October 11th um, for interactive word walls. So if you attended, you'll find that to be a nice review and all the resources are in one place. And if you weren't able to attend, I think you'll also find that to be a great first starting point and really have enough information to get it framed up and to get going. So um, go back into Canvas if you're interested in that. It's about a 15 minute long video, but all the links and information are right there for you. And then just a final reminder about assessments. Remember that STEM Scopes has an assessment bank that can be found right up here on the main menu. And it's a great place where you can find items that are particular to a standard. They're marked by depth of knowledge, and you can search um, by standard and make your own custom assessment. And then I just have a couple of final thoughts um, as we wrap up. Um, first of all, a big thank you to all the teachers that have been jumping into the discussion boards and participating um, as we move into Canvas. Um, I, I'm very excited about the possibilities of collaboration. Um, on October 11th, during our PD day, um, we had a section that was called um, SOAR in Science, and there was some Padlet feedback. And I found some really great um, feedback from teachers in there, and anyone's welcome to go back in there and take a look. You just go back into the October 11th. The Padlet link is there, and it's uh, still up. So thank you if you participated in that. Um, also, thank you if you're starting to um, be part of the discussion boards. Uh, 
Every six weeks we'll have our curriculum preview. This was from the second six weeks and there'll always be a place for a discussion or answer a question or ask me a question. Um, this is a really powerful tool for you to get really um, just in time answers for your questions, but also to share out with other teachers and hear from other teachers about what's working in their ideas um, as well. So thank you. And if you haven't tried it, give it a shot this six weeks. And then finally, I just want to remind you that we have built in some face to face time. If you would like to meet together with colleagues or if you need some time with any of the coordinators, it's called C3 and you can find those dates in the workshop and we'll also send an email blast out um, for that. So just another optional way for us to support you, our wonderful teachers. Thanks so much for joining me and great, great left this six weeks and let me know if I can help support your instruction in any way.